We are Pro Cannabis Media. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Weed Talk News. I'm Jimmy Young, the founder of Pro Cannabis Media. And I'm Kurt Dalton, the founder of Cannabis.net. Well, the big story this week, and it does relate to the cannabis world, is that Democratic nominee or assumed nominee, Joe Biden, his pick has been made as far as his vice president candidate, and that will be California Senator Kamala Harris. Is that a good thing, Kurt, for the pro-cannabis movement or not? Well, that is really where you read your social media, Jimmy, because right off the bat, Steve D'Angelo, a big figure in this industry, said worst possible choice based on her history uh, of criminal prosecutions and who she took campaign money from. But at the same day, Normal, the uh, attorney association for the entire industry, praised the choice because of her sponsorship of different uh, cannabis acts uh, right now in Congress. So you tell me, uh, is she a great pick or a bad pick as far as just the weed vote? Okay, so I think she's a great pick, and here's the reason why. It's 2020, and she's gonna go with the flow. She's from California, okay, and she's a black female. This is all good stuff if you want he who will not be named on this show to be out of the White House. Uh, Remember, she was a co-sponsor of Cory Booker's Marijuana Justice Act, and her decision back in 2018, this is a quote from Kamala Harris. Right now in this country, people are getting arrested, being prosecuted, and end up spending time in jail or prison, all because of their use of a drug that otherwise should be considered legal. Making marijuana legal at the federal level is the smart thing to do. It's the right thing to do. I know this as a former prosecutor, and I know it as a senator. Senator, And I'll tell you, Kurt, when I read that, I feel much, much better about this election. I agree for the future. Let me ask you this, Jimmy. She's a politician who obviously will have aspirations to become president, whether it's in four or eight years, depending on Joe Biden's health. Politicians generally side on what the public wants by a majority to get the votes. With cannabis legalization running something in the high 70s with Democrats and even pushing 60 percent with Republicans, even if she had no opinion on the plant whatsoever today, she would choose the one the voters want to get elected as president or reelected. So in that sense, do you think she's going to go with the flow just because that's what people want and I want to become president? Actually, I think it is she's doing her job. As a politician, okay, you have to learn how to be on the fence and listen to your constituency. And if the constituency is leaning in that direction, then you must act that way when you are an elected official. This is what I'd like to see. And I actually think it's still a very good choice. I'm very, very happy about it. And Lord knows you know who I'm voting for. (laughs) Well, one thing that did rally on the news was cannabis stocks. So let's go right to the Green Market Report and Deb Borchart, who's back from her hurricane week off. And let's get our Wall Street Minute with weed stocks. Thanks, Kurt. Thanks, Jimmy. It is good to be back on the electric grid again. This week, we got earnings from some fairly big cannabis companies, but here's the thing. The revenues didn't seem to match up with some of the losses that they were reporting. For example, Canopy Growth reported their first fiscal 2021 revenue coming in at $110 million, but they reported net losses of $128 million. Acreage Holdings reported that their second quarter revenue came in at $27.1 million, This was a 53% increase over last year, but they still reported that their net loss was $37.2 million. Even Trulieve, who had an eye-popping second quarter revenue of $120 million, said that their net income fell to just $6.6 million. And that's after reporting net income of 57 million last year for the same time period. It seems like the best company this week was Grow Generation. They reported their revenue came in at $43 million. And this is despite warning that they might get hurt by COVID issues. And they raised their guidance for the year to a range of 170 to $175 million. And that's it for this week. I'm Deborah Borchart with the Green Market Report for We Talk News. Well, it was just about a month ago, Kurt, that you and I talked about what was going on in Arizona as far as the legalization of cannabis. Sure enough, there is a ballot question that has been 
brought up and will be on the ballot because they were able to get enough signatures to get it on that ballot. However, some prohibitionists challenged the ballot question, said it wasn't very clear, and a judge this week basically said, uh, sorry, you prohibitionists. Uh, it is clear that this question is about the legalization of cannabis, so that challenge has now been thrown out, and that ballot question for legalization in Arizona will be on the ballot in November of 2020. Your thoughts about that whole thing? Arizona's been on this treadmill for recreational for about three years now. And ever since medical was approved, the battle started. So I feel like we're in the 24th mile of a marathon for them. And the prohibitionists are throwing their last ditch blockage at it. I think that it's, it's going to get on the ballot. It's going to pass. Everyone needs the tax dollars. They've had a good history with the uh, medical program there. And it's just a last ditch attempt by the people who are uh, anti-pot to try to slow it down. But good for Arizona that you can see the finish line. It's, it's, you know, November, they can finally get there. And speaking of the pro pot world, that would be coming from the Washington DC and the guys from the Vote Pro podcast. And that's our own Phil Adams, who has this week's DC report. Phil? Hi, Phil Adams from Vote Pro podcast. Here with the We Talk News DC report. With the selection of California Senator Kamala Harris to be Joe Biden's running mate, the question of her stance on cannabis legal reform has come to the fore. As San Francisco District Attorney, Harris oversaw more than 1,900 marijuana convictions. In 2010, Harris co authored a voter guide opposing cannabis legalization. Since then, however, Harris has modified her stance. Last year, she co-sponsored legislation to deschedule marijuana. And as a presidential candidate, Harris has made cannabis legalization of a, a component of her campaign, saying, quote, times have changed. Marijuana should not be a crime. This would seem to be at odds with Joe Biden, who recently came out against descheduling and legalization. The U.S. Department of Agriculture this week explained why it is denying hemp growers access to federal coronavirus relief. Under the Coronavirus Food Assistance Program, the USDA is only providing benefits to commodities producers who have experienced a 5% price decline between January and April. Department analysis has found that hemp prices do not meet that threshold. And activists in the District of Columbia have launched a ballot initiative to legalize cannabis sales in the city. Titled the New Modern Day Cannabis Justice Reform Act, the measure seeks to end prosecutions of all cannabis cultivation, sales, and consumption. While possession of small amounts of cannabis and home cultivation are legal in the district, retail sales and commercial production are banned by congressional action. The ballot measure would also prevent police searches for cannabis and expunge prior cannabis convictions. That's the Weed Talk News DC report from the nation's capital. I'm Phil Adams from Vote Pro Podcast. Another story out of New England involves not only the great state of Maine, where a retail store is about to open, but hasn't yet, but it's looking at Vermont. Now, everybody recognizes that Vermont is a legal cannabis state. You can actually possess up to one ounce of cannabis and not get arrested in Vermont. You can actually grow a few plants in your residence if you would like in Vermont. However, the move towards a retail market in Vermont has not happened yet. However, a bill is now in that legislature. And you might remember, Kurt, that it was the Vermont legislature that actually got that state to legalize cannabis at this point. So they are poised to perhaps opening up a retail market in Vermont. But you got to give the Vermont legislature credit because they aren't afraid to move forward with the cannabis effort. Yeah, it seems like these New England states, you know, Massachusetts finally got their rec open. Maine's had it approved for almost two and a half years, and they're about to open rec. Vermont, like you said, was ahead of everybody. Um, and then they're finally getting there. It seems like the, the dam's breaking on this rec, and they're actually going to get some stores open. Does it have anything to do with tax revenue needed for unemployment benefits, for COVID damage? It's awfully coincidental that all these places are getting their rec after two or three year battles open rather quickly. And 
You know, Vermont isn't that far away from the our friendly neighbors to the north that are hosting the Stanley Cup playoffs. Uh, that would be in Canada. And that's where we're going to find Solomon Israel from MJ Biz Daily's International Bureau. Let's go to Solomon for the Canadian Cannabis Report. Solomon? I'm Solomon Israel from Marijuana Business Daily International, and this is the Weed Talk News Canadian Cannabis Report. Canopy Growth Corporation posted a net loss of 128 million Canadian dollars for its first quarter, but net revenue increased slightly from the previous quarter to 110 million. CEO David Klein says the company is working to improve the quality of its cannabis flower going forward. Meanwhile, Klein himself is being well paid after taking the top job at Canopy in January. His compensation for the year amounts to nearly 34 million US dollars, regulatory filings reveal. That makes Klein the highest paid cannabis CEO in Canada, earning more than 1,000 times the compensation for Canopy's median worker. And in Canada's recreational market, marijuana vape pens are winning in the so-called Cannabis 2.0 category since launching last December. The latest numbers for the key provinces of Ontario, Alberta, and British Columbia show vape pens have earned more market share than other refined cannabis products, like edibles, beverages, and concentrates. In Ontario, vape pens' market share is even break beating out pre-rolled joints. You can read those stories and more at mjbizdaily.com. I'm Solomon Israel from Marijuana Business Daily. Here's this week's MJ Biz Daily Industry Fact Book Factoid of the Week. And that's a mouthful. Check out the total economic impact of cannabis from 2019 to 2024. And the most interesting thing about this graph is that for every $1 that consumers and patients spend at a recreational store and or medical dispensary, MJ Biz estimates that an additional $2.50 will be injected into the economy, much of it at the local level. That's this week's factoid from the MJ Biz Daily Factbook. You can get yours online at mjbizdaily.com. Well, as we all know, Canada is a legal country for cannabis. And you have to wonder now, as the movement towards legalization continues to get some momentum going here in the United States, we also see, Kurt, that stocks in Canada are going up now. They think that this may be moving towards legalization time in the United States. Isn't, is that a, I don't know, kind of an indicator of what might happen? Yeah, going back to our uh, VP pick, you're starting to feel that November is going to happen. The Democrats are going to win. We're going to see movement on legalization at the federal level. Cannabis stocks have obviously responded. Uh, articles are out about merger acquisition. Who has dry powder right now to start making deals? Who wants to get their brands, whether it's in Canada to the U.S. or across a state line? So you're starting to get some grumblings about, well, we, we think this is real now. Let's start getting our, our uh, chess pieces in line. Um, so there is good news. I mean, people are obviously responding as a group and buying cannabis stocks, thinking that Harris is a good pick and the Democrats have a chance to win. Well, you know which way I'm leaning on that one. And I make no secrets about that. As long as we get a change in the White House, I'm going to be a very happy man. Well, that'll do it for We Talk News for this week. I'm Jimmy Young from Pro Cannabis Media. And I'm Kurt Dalton from Cannabis.net. Remember, it's a whole new world of weed out there. Use it responsibly. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We Talk Now, We Talk News, and In the Weeds are all available on most major podcast distributors like iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, and our friends at clnsmedia.com and our flagship, cannabis.net. So subscribe, share, and like our videos on all the social media networks out there, including LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, The Weed Tube, and YouTube. Weed Talk and In the Weeds are two productions of Pro Cannabis Media supported by Revolutionary Clinics, one of the top medical cannabis dispensaries in the Massachusetts area. Now with three locations in Greater Boston, two in Cambridge and one on Broadway in Somerville. Rev Clinics has a patient first mission. They will customize your needs as a medical patient with the proper titration and combination of strains, flavors, and products. Rev Clinics, where the patient comes first. We are Pro Cannabis Media.